We are 31 days from day one of the NFL Draft. Joined by Paul Dettino, I am John Schmelk. Pro days continue. Let's start with BYU and start with Zach Wilson. Now, the Giants, Paul, are probably not going to be in the neighborhood for him, but he will get picked ahead of the Giants, one of those big dominoes that are going to go off the board. He's among five potential top 15 quarterbacks. He was asked what sets him apart. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones, you know, for sure. Uh, this draft is is full of, of good players. Uh, a lot of good, a lot of good quarterbacks I've worked with out in California as well. Uh, you know, something I feel like that separates me is, uh, you know, just my passion for the game. Uh, I really, I really put a lot of time into what I do, and uh, you know, throughout all the all the years and stuff, you know, I've really just you know dedicated my life to football. You know, it's really it's crazy. You know, when people try to ask me what I do outside of football, you know, football is really my life. You know, it's like it's like everything I got going on. So, uh, somebody that can extend plays, somebody that can make something happen uh, outside of the offense when things break down is, is something I, I take a lot of pride in. And Paul, the last thing Zach Wilson talked about there was his ability to make plays outside of structure. They really tried to feature that in a throwing program at his pro day that truly was spectacular. Yeah, outside of structure, true, but it was all planned structure on the pro day, which is designed to make a guy look as good as he can. Look, the idea about Wilson is he's coming off a shoulder injury, a hand injury. The competition was not the best at BYU. There are some questions here. This guy, to me, is still a projection. Now, what he does, he does exceptionally well, but he's still a projection. Could go as high as number two to the New York Jets. Will be one of those big dominoes that we have to keep an eye on in the draft. Two other players from BYU, Brady Christensen and Kairos Tonga. Yeah, Tonga is basically one of those big guys you just throw in the middle and say plug every hole that you can. He is thick, John. I think when you look at the video, it's hard to find his neck. That's how thick and beefy he is. Very stout fella. Uh, I don't know necessarily what his uh, durability is going to be in terms of how many downs you play him. I think he's a first and second down player. And as far as Christensen, look, offensive tackle, I know that his tape did have inconsistencies, but he is a high-level, hard-working kind of guy who's going to try to overachieve only 300 pounds only 6'2 so you'll keep an eye on him but he did set a record for offensive tackles yeah. in the broad jump so he's a very good athlete and only 32 inch arms we'll have to keep an eye on how teams view him as a guard or a tackle. Yeah, he'll be inside yeah let's take a look Paul at the University of Michigan now a lot of players coming out of Michigan let's start with Nico Collins a wide receiver 6'4 he opted out last year we saw him at the senior bowl he impressed with his contested catch ability and I think both of us were surprised that he dropped a 443 at his pro day a great number and 34 inch arms with a 6'7 three cone this reminds me of Denzel Mims last year who has these similar measurables and then blew it up at his pro day yeah I kind of look at him as Chase Claypool liked He's certainly not Claypool, but in a lot of ways, very similar and will remind you of him uh, in so many aspects. The one thing that I think you want to look at with Collins is that he did not show great play speed all the time on tape, but yet at the pro day, he did. This goes into that whole situation about what's game speed and what is measurement speed. If he can pick up his play speed, boy, is he going to be something. All right, let's go to Quiddy Pay, the edge rusher, someone that was expected to blow up the pro day. Well, he tweaked his leg a little bit, had an injury on his 40-yard dash, just ran a 4-5-2, didn't do his three-cone drill. Previously, he had set records on his three-cone drill, checked in at 6'2", 260 pounds, did not have a ton of production last year, just a couple of sacks, just played in a handful of games, but he's probably going to be a top-20 pick. Yeah, you know, this is a guy who you have to wonder about how Michigan was utilizing him because it doesn't appear like they maximized his potential. And so, again, you're in that projection category, John, which is what we're talking about with all of these edge rushers. They're boom or bust candidates because when I look at Pay, I would kind of like to make him a 4-3 defensive end. I'm kind of thinking that would be the best scheme for him, and that may tell some teams to shy away. Another player in Michigan that heading into this year was considered maybe one of the best cornerbacks in the Big Ten, but he opted out, and now teams are trying to figure it out. That's Ambry Thomas, 5'11", 191, a 4'3", 40 at his pro day. Yeah, because of the limited amount of games and snaps that he's played in school, he does become an enigma because there's no question when you look at his measurements and his skill set, you say, wow, this guy should be dynamite. Well, the truth of the matter is he's obviously going to be raw because he hasn't played as many snaps as guys who would have played three or four years. Yeah, he'll probably be a day two pick. Same with Jalen Mayfield, the offensive tackle, checked in at 6'5", 326. 
that is ideal size for an offensive mm -hmm. tackle in the NFL. John, Mayfield only had 15 starts in school. And again, this is another one of those guys who, because of the limited action that he put on tape in college, you're going to have to project a little more than you would like. It will probably hurt his draft stock, but that doesn't mean he can't play. Right. Two other guys in the backfield. One's a running back, Chris Evans, ran a 4-4-4 40-yard dash. He was kind of lost in the Michigan rotation last year. But the guy I want to hear you talk about, Paul, because he's old school, and I love the old school guys, Ben Mason. He was at the Senior Bowl, 6'2", 246, a traditional old school lead blocking fullback, 29 reps on the bench press. Very powerful, which you can hear by that number. Uh, yes, Traditional fullback in that he blocks, he blocks, and he blocks. And oh, by the way, he also shows hands and can catch. And a fullback who blocks and catches sounds like a lot of coaches would still have a use for some, for somebody like that. We just saw Kyle Juszczyk get a big contract this offseason, so maybe in that realm we'll have to find out. For Paul Dottino, I'm John Schmelk. As we keep an eye on the Pro Days leading up to the 2021 NFL Draft.